To redeem means to buy back, to pay the price, pay the ransom. And that's what Christ did on the cross for you, my friend. He died to pay for your sins. And by faith, he'll give it to you freely. Look at verse 25. Talking about that redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Now, the word propitiation simply means a fully satisfying payment. You know, my friend, if you had a million dollar debt that you owed a credit card company, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Right? Well, it wouldn't make much difference if you paid them $5 a year because you'll never pay that debt off in your lifetime, would you? You'll always be under the bondage of that creditor. But what if someone came along and paid that million dollar debt for you? They paid the payment in full. Well, imagine you had a debt that you owed God as a sinner, my friend. And only one man could pay it, and that was the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and he paid it fully. So he was the propitiation. He was your fully satisfying payment. And it's, look what it says in verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his what? Blood. You know, we're going to look at some verses as we go on in this study. There's some Bibles that take out the blood of Jesus Christ in certain passages. I got something for you. If you go to your Bible and go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, and see if it says redemption through his blood. If, if, the, the, if they take the blood out, the blood is not in Colossians 1.14 in your Bible. You have the wrong Bible. You need to get yourself a King James Version of the Bible. Because, see, redemption is through his blood. Verse 25, God set forth his son to be a propitiation, a fully satisfying payment for you, for your sins, through faith in his blood. Now, you notice he said faith in his blood. No works there. Faith is believe. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is taking God at his word. God says his son paid it with his blood. You just believe it. Look what he says, verse 25. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You know, my friend, when Israel was under that law, that's what Paul is saying. And, and, and those sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. God allowed Israel, when they sinned, to sacrifice little lambs and bulls and goats, right? And pigeons and things like that, turtle doves. Yet, they didn't understand what was going on. The book of Hebrews says that the blood of bulls and goats and those little turtle doves couldn't take away sin. God had to come and do it himself. See, God came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and he became the Lamb of God to take away the sin didn't he, of the world. He shed his blood. And because God knew his son would come here, he allowed these people to cover their sins for a moment through that shed blood of that animal. But that animal really didn't redeem them. God knew that one day his son would come in fulfillment of those types and shadows in the law with those animals. See, my friend, but today we have the real thing. We don't have a shadow. You don't have to go back there and perform to please God. If you're in Christ, you're pleasing to God. You're accepted in his beloved son. So just look at verse 25 again. Verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time, see that, but now the present time, his righteousness. You know, God declared his righteousness in his son, Jesus Christ. God's righteousness is no longer found in the law of Moses. That's not how he declares his righteousness. It's now through Jesus Christ and what the Apostle Paul says in Romans through Philemon. If you're going to know Jesus Christ today, you're going to have to get to know him in Romans through Philemon. That's the message of Christ called the mystery. Look at this. Verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You see that? A man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Go back to Romans chapter 4 and let's look. Go back to Romans 4 and look at verse 5. Go forward to Romans 4, verse 4 and 5. Romans chapter 4, verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You hear, you hear what the apostle says? That if you could work, for, if you work for it and God gives it to you, it's not of grace, it's of debt. The problem with that is God is working the dispensation of grace. He's only dishing out his righteousness by, by faith, by grace through faith. But look at verse 5. But to him that worketh not, now this is a good thing, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith 
is counted for righteousness. You see that? Today in the dispensation of grace, God imputes righteousness by faith without works. In fact, if you're saved today and you want to be pleasing to God, it's the same principle. It's going to be you taking in the word of God's grace. Get this now. This will change your Christian life. As you therefore receive Jesus Christ, your, as the Lord, by grace through faith plus nothing, that's how you're going to walk. It's as you take in the word of his grace through the Apostle Paul that you will walk pleasing to God. The Apostle, as in his 13 books, makes it clear that as you take in the sound doctrine that he preaches, Romans through Philemon, it will, it will work in your inner man to bring forth fruit unto God. You don't even have to try to do it. It'll happen. Remember that. As you take in what the Apostle Paul writes in his 13 books, and you believe it, and you store it in your soul, sound doctrine, you will begin, it'll be God which worketh in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Because you're going to say, well, Ron, how can I please God? If he doesn't want us to work, then how does it work? Well, if he wants you to study your Bible dispensationally. He wants you to get the doctrine, the sound doctrine Paul preaches in your heart, in your mind. And therefore, you'll start to operate, think like Christ, labor with them, act like them. Because you'll have Pauline doctrine working in you. That's how you do it. And you'll find yourself doing the things that please God without even working hard to do them. That's the grace message. That's how God works in you today. Okay? Now, go back to Galatians chapter 3. Go back to our text in Galatians 3. You know, my friend, the grace message is the most wonderful message on earth. Because it's what God is doing today. Now, Paul says verse, in verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and that living is eternal life. If you're going to have eternal life today, it's going to be by God's grace through faith with no works of your own, okay? Jesus Christ is the issue. It's not the law. Look at verse 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. You know, my friend, the law is not a faith. You know, you could have just gone and did the, the ceremonial things of the law, those works of the law. Didn't, didn't take faith to do that. Anybody could do that in Israel. You know, the Apostle Paul, as Saul of Tarsus, did all those works. And it says, as, as far as the righteousness of the law, he was blameless. Yet he was a lost man. Because his faith wasn't resting in the person, Jesus Christ. Hold your hand here as we wind down our study. Go to Acts chapter 13 and look at verse 38. The apostle says this to the nation of Israel and to the men that he ministered to, the Gentiles, the Jew and Gentile he ministered to. In Acts chapter 13, verse 38, let's look at this. Paul writes in Acts 13, verse 38, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sins, 